Hey, Abbott, what time is it? It's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood tonight for your listening pleasure with Susan Miller and the music of Matty Malley. Hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Luke Costello. All right, Costello, all right, all right, stop the yelling. Say, where did you get that black eye? A girl. What happened? I popped a question and she popped me back. <laughs> Why did she pop you back? Wrong question. I... <laughs> Costello, you've got to have more backbone with girls. Uh, when you're with a girl, assert yourself. What do you mean? Well, just say, look, babe, either you do what I want you to do or go jump in the lake. I tried that. And what happened? Last week, they pulled six girls out of the lake. <laughs> now, take me, for instance. I'm very popular with the girls. Oh, yeah? Certainly. Remember the girls at the Glendale Laundry? Yes, they voted you the guy they would most like to mangle. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, that was mingle and not mangle, but remember, Costello, back in Patterson, when the girls got us to join the Patterson Bowling and Necking Society. Yes, we ought to go back there sometime and do a little bowling. <laughs> well, I gotta leave you now, Abbott. I'm running for door catcher in Glendale. I've gotta write out a speech. You're running for public office. What do you know about politics? Why, back in New Jersey, I ran for state senator once, but my opponent made a wonderful speech and promised every voter $6, $60 a month. And he was elected 3000 to nothing. 3000 to nothing? Didn't you even vote for yourself? Heck no. I wanted that $60, too. Ah, oh, shut up. <laughs> Folks, you're in for some real laughs with our zany stars tonight. But before they continue, listen to this. What's all that fish and tackle doing in your dressing room? Well, after the program, I'm going fishing in the Los Angeles River. Oh, that's silly. If you catch any fish in that river, they'll be too old to eat. What do you mean? There's so little water in the Los Angeles River that the fish are seven years old before they learn to swim. <laughs> well, never mind that. I saw you in Hollywood yesterday buying a palette, paint and brushes. Uh, are you thinking of becoming an artist? I am an artist, Habit. And I've got a beautiful model that comes to my house every day. I'm painting her in a bathing suit, but she wants to quit. Why? She wants me to put on more clothes. I... <laughs> How long has this model been uh, posing for you? Well, she started yesterday. She came at 9 o'clock. I was painting her until 3 o'clock, and at 6, she went home. Wait a minute. If you stopped painting her at 3 o'clock, why did she stay until 6? It took her three hours for her to get the paint off her skin. I... <laughs> <laughs> and boy, is she a beautiful girl, Abbott. She's six foot five, and last night when she left, I kissed her goodbye. Now, oh, wait a minute. How could a little short guy like you kiss a girl six foot five? My brother put me up to it. I... <laughs> you idiot, you a painter. I don't think you ever painted in your life. Is that so? Well, here is a picture I drew of a railroad train. You drew this picture of the train? Uh, all I see is the engine. Where's the train? The engine draws the train. Uh... <laughs> yeah! Hey, here's another sample of my work. It's a painting of my Uncle Mike drinking a bottle of gin. Wait a minute, all I see is an empty bottle. Where's your Uncle Mike? How do you like that? He passed out of the picture. <laughs> Who's your art teacher, Lou? I'm studying with Rembrandt. 
You dope. Rembrandt has been dead for 200 years. I was wondering why he never charged me for any lessons. <laughs> Are there any other artists in your family? Well, my Uncle Jim Cully is a very unusual painter. He paints men and women. Well, what's unusual about that? Lots of artists paint men and women. On doors? Uh... <laughs> Look, if you want to be an artist, Costello, why don't you learn to etch? I was thinking of that. I was... <laughs> Could I have that again? Uh, I said etch. You should learn to etch. Uh, you got to learn etch? Certainly. <laughs> My little nephew, Tony, etches all over. He never took a lesson in his life. <laughs> no, he, no, no. He had etch. a seven-year etch. No, no. <laughs> he scratched real hard and did it in three. No, 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 no. <laughs> Of course, you can do a lot of good etching in seven years. Oh, sure. Yes, yes, but this uh, etching is like engraving. You, you scratch on a copper plate. I have to scratch on a copper plate? Yes, certainly. <laughs> Why can't I scratch where it etches? Forget about etching. Have you ever done any commercial painting? Oh, sure. I'm painting a calendar now. Here, take a look at it. No, that, that's a calendar. All I see is an unfinished picture of a beautiful girl. Uh, where are the dates? I'll make those when I know the girl better. <laughs> the pain girls, why don't you try bathing beauty? I tried that, Abbott. Those beauties won't let you bathe them. <laughs> well, I gotta go now, Abbott. I gotta deal with my new girlfriend. She's a lady wrestler. I think she's in love with me. What makes you think that lady wrestler's in love with you? Last night, she bent me into the shape of a heart. <laughs> run for your life! Run for your life! Quick, boys! Run for your life! Well, what's the matter? Why should we run for our life? I just deliver them to the newsstand and let it be sold out in a minute. Right. <laughs> That was Abbott's nephew, folks. Why don't you take him down to the brewery, Abbott, and see if they can't put a head on him? Now, 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 don't worry about... Don't worry about Norman. He's a very talented boy. He's studying singing, and when he finishes his course, he'll be another Carmen Lombardo. Must we have another Carmen Lombardo? 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 Oh, lay off him, Costello. Remember, this is a free country. Right, Abbott. I always say that a man is entitled to life, liberty, and the pursuit of women. You're right. No, 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 no! That pursuit of happiness. You pursue what you like, and I'll pursue what I like. <laughs> Speaking of Per Susan, here is our singing star, Per Susan Miller. Hey, Abbott, who writes this stuff? Our writers. They work very hard. They spend 12 hours a day in their office over a typewriter. Then why is this script written in pool chalk? <laughs> <laughs> and that's no way to introduce Susan Miller. Well, how would you introduce her? Abbott, I would give it plenty of class. For instance... Well, here, listen to this. Ladies and gentlemen, we are very fortunate in having with us tonight a great singing star, Miss Susan Miller. Miss Miller comes here to this program direct from a 40-week engagement in New York City on the Astor Roof, where she was laying tar paper. <laughs> Ladies... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this little girl, Susan Miller, is going places, and if I had time, I'd go with her. For her selection tonight, she will sing that touching ballad, Mother, Stay Away From That Oatmeal, Salesman, or He'll Let You Have It In The Mush. <laughs> During this number, she will be accompanied by Matty Malick and his You Can Have Em, I Don't Want Em, They're Too Flat For Me Orchestra. <laughs> During this number, you will hear a feature solo by the band soloist, Rudolph and his magic pressure cooker. <laughs> Pardon me. Hey, Abbott, what's his name doing out here? Costello, that's Susan Miller. Oh, yeah, come on, folks. Give her a nice hand. <laughs> Costello, I heard those remarks, and I want to talk to you. You mean you want to talk to me, Lou Costello, with a flesh? No, just the way you are will be all right. <laughs> now, what's the idea of telling people that I laid tar paper on the roof of the Astor Hotel? You didn't? Certainly not. It was the Biltmore Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Costello, I noticed you were out with another girl last night. Shame on you, Costello. You're supposed to be going steady with Susan, and you out with another girl? Who was she? I don't know, but she was very classy. I'll tell you who she was. She's the girl that washes cars in the filling station across the street. I wondered why she wore those rubber gloves with her evening gown. <laughs> well, Costello... If you're going to go out with other girls, then I'm going to start going out with other men. And that's telling him, Susan. You can get plenty of dates. I'll say I can. Why, just this evening, a handsome stranger walked up to me on the street and asked me for a date. Gee, Susan, I hope you wouldn't go out with a total stranger. I should say not. I told him off. You did? Yes. 
I said, sir, how dare you talk to a beautiful single girl that lives alone at 1537 Vine Street on the second floor in apartment six and is always home evenings after nine o'clock. <laughs> You certainly told him off. I thought you were going to get chummy with him. Susan, you better let me take you home tonight. It isn't safe for a pretty girl like you to be on the streets alone. Oh, that's ridiculous. I carry a revolver in my bag, and I'm an expert pistol shot. I've studied jujitsu, and I also carry a dagger, and I'm a pretty good knife thrower. Susan, will you do me a favor? What? You take me home. (laughs) And if you'll promise never to go out with another guy, any other guy but me, I'll get you in pictures. How dare you? Are you trying to bribe me? What nerve? What gall? What studio? Uh, hey, you. What a joke. Yes. <laughs> and you, you quit worrying about getting girls in pictures and start worrying about this radio show. Costello, I've got an idea that would really help this radio show. Uh, what is it? Well, have Jack Benny on every week. If we had Jack Benny on every week, they wouldn't need me. <laughs> you catch on fast. <laughs> so long, Patso. He had a good idea. All comedians need help on the radio. Bob Hope's got Kelowna. Eddie Canna has the Mad Russian. Edgar Bergen's got Charlie McCarthy. And then there's Harry James. Well, Harry James isn't a comedian. No, but look what he's got. I... <laughs> you idiot, you're lucky you've got me. Where would you be without me? And where would you be without me? Where would you be without me? Well, we came out even on that one. <laughs> we can't have a joke after every line. <laughs> Some new ideas for this program. Hey, hey, fellows, I got a, I got a new idea. Manny Malik, you keep out of this. Your job is to take care of the band. What's the matter with the band? I didn't say anything about the band. I like the band. You've got one of the finest bands in the lower-priced field. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Quiet, Costello. Matty, what's the idea you have? Why don't you let me do some of my recitations? Like, for instance, Hey, Diddle Diddle, the cat and the fiddle, and the cow jumped over the moon. That's Mother Goose. Rub a dub dub, three men in a tub. What's that? That's unsanitary. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Abbott, Malnick ain't got no talent. We're wasting time. If you want some new ideas for this program, why don't we put my pal, the drummer, on? Now, there is a clever fella. All right, bring him up here. <clears throat> Come here, Oliver. Do you call me? <laughs> yes, Abbott. I want you to meet our drummer, Oliver Storchy. Oliver Storchy. That's a very odd name. Well, that's only a stage name. What's his real name? Victor Storchese. (laughs) Well, what is he going to do? Sing? Dance? Are you kidding? This guy is a real novelty. He can drink a five-gallon jug of hard cider and one continuous drink without taking the jug away from his lips. Oliver, you must be uh, very fond of cider. Yeah. Well, every time I see an apple, I want to squeeze it. (laughs) (laughs) With me, it's a peach. Oh, you kid. Uh, just a second. Is this cider really hard? Hard. Go ahead, Oliver. Show him. <laughs> that hard enough, Abbott? Now, go ahead, Oliver. Pull the cork. Okay. I'm ready now. I will drink the five gallons without taking even one breath. One gallon. Two gallons. Three gallons and not a drop on his chin. <laughs> this guy's going to scuttle himself. Have it? He did it. How do you like that? Boy, this fellow is loaded with talent. He's got a little cider in him, too. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver, that was a great stunt. I'm sure that the radio audience wants to hear a few words from you. Say something, Oliver. <laughs> Thank you, Oliver Storchy. <laughs> There's a lot more mad stuff still to come, but right now, a change of pace to let you hear this.
Miller sings with Matty Malnick's orchestra. I've got rings on my fingers and bells on my toes. Jim O'Shea was cast away upon an Indian eye. The natives there, they like his hair, they like his Irish smile. So made him Chief Pangendrum, the nabob of them all. They called him Jujaboo Jay and rigged him out so gay. So he wrote to Dublin Bay, sweetheart, just to say, sure, I've got rings on my fingers, bells on my toes, elephants to ride upon my little Irish road. So come to your neighbor and next St. Patrick's Day, be Mistress Mumbo Jumbo Jujaboo Jay O'Shea. When she kissed his hand, he led her to his harem, where he had wives galore. She started shedding a tear, said he now have no fear. I'm keeping these wives here just for ornament, my dear, because I've got rings on my fingers, bells on my toes, elephants to ride upon my little Irish road. So come to your neighbor and next St. Patrick's Day, be Mistress Mumbo Jumbo Jijaboo, Mistress Mumbo Jumbo Jijaboo, Mistress Mumbo Jumbo Jijaboo Jay, oh Shay! Costello, we've simply got to dig up some new ideas for this program. I'm, I'm not worried about it, Abbott. If the radio goes on a blink, I can always go back to my old racket. You know, I used to be a sculptor. A sculptor? Yes, I used to make marble toupees for bald-headed statues. Ah, good evening, gentlemen. I understand you boys are looking for a new idea for your radio show, and I have just what you need. My name is Benny Rubin. Costello, this is Benny Rubin, the famous Broadway comedian. What are you doing out here in California, Benny? I came out here for my liver. Uh, what was your liver doing out here? <laughs> oh, never mind him, Benny. Uh, did you have a good trip from New York? Yeah, I came in by plane. Though we nearly had an accident, we ran into a skywriter. Oh, my goodness. Did you hurt the skywriter? No, we missed him, but we knocked the H out of Honest John. <laughs> You know, the last time I flew on a plane from New York, there was a fresh guy on a plane annoying the hostess. When the plane landed in Kansas City, they kicked them off. Was the rest of the trip pleasant? I don't know. I took a bus in from Kansas City. <laughs> oh, stop this and pay attention, Costello. Mr. Rubin is a great actor. Uh, he, was in the, he was in that picture of the Naked City. That's right. I saw that picture in Boston, Rubin. I didn't see you in it. In Boston, they made us change the title. They called it the Bathrobe City. <laughs> By the way, Ruben, I'm quite an actor myself. Did you see my last picture? I hope so. It was a great picture, and I'll prove it to you. Did anyone out there in the audience see The Noose Hangs High? I did, and I want to say that it was the finest picture that was ever shown in a theater in this country. It was a great picture. It was a grand picture, and your acting was superb. Thank you, sir. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Yeah, Louie. Mom said on the way home to buy some meat. Get out of here! Aha! <laughs> uh -huh. You see that? You're not so popular. You even have to bring your relatives in here for your radio show. That's not so. These people love me. They come in here because they want to see me. I'll prove it to you. Is there anybody that don't want to see me act and wants to go home? I do! Anybody else? <laughs> oh, stop this nonsense, Costello. Uh, Benny, what would you suggest that we do to build up this radio show? Well, the best way to do it is to let the audience participate in the show. Well, I was thinking that if we... What did you say? You should allow the audience to come up on stage and participate. They wouldn't dare. <laughs> they haven't got the nerve. <laughs> That's a good idea that Benny has. How would you suggest we, uh, we do this and go about this, Benny? Well, I'll tell you. We'll invite some people up from the audience. We'll get them to do some cute little stunts, and then Costello gives the money and prizes, and everybody will be happy. Now, that sounds good, Costello. People like to win things. Oh, yes, I remember my Aunt May was the first person to win prizes on a radio show. She won mink coats, diamond rings, washing machines, sets of dishes, radios, and everything, and then she put all those things in her hope chest. 
That was 30 years ago. Did she get married? She never married, but that was the start of the make company. <laughs> Boys, how about it? Shall we get some people up on the stage and get things humming? Hey, this sounds like fun, Benny. How about you, sir? Would you come up here? You, oh. sir. Hey, thank you, sir. Uh, would you stand right here, please? Thank you. Yeah, now, uh, uh, what is your name? Harry Brown. And your occupation? I'm a pickpocket. Uh, <laughs> uh, don't you know it's wrong to take money dishonestly? That's dishonest? Why, do you... What do you do for a living? I... <clears throat> uh, pardon me. <clears throat> uh, let's go over the program. <laughs> Wait a minute, boys. Let me handle this. Now, uh, when the audience came in tonight, we gave our door prizes. What did you get when you came in the studio tonight? Three wallets, a top coat, and a diamond bracelet. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, sir. I didn't mean that. What did you get from our sponsor? Nothing. I didn't know where he was sitting. <laughs> I see. Forget the question. And let's get on with the show. Uh, Mr. Costello will ask you a simple question, and if you don't answer it, Mr. Costello will think, it, uh, think up a stunt for you to do. Now... I want you to answer this question before the bell rings. What country... Too late, you missed. <laughs> Sit down there for a minute, and I'll think up a stunt for you. Sir. And you here's me? our next contestant, this young lady. Now, uh, what is your name, miss? Magnolia Randolph. Oh, gosh, you're pretty. Are you sure that's your right name, Magnolia Randolph? Yeah, yes. And I have a gold identification bracelet on my ankle that'll prove it. Here's a... Oh, my gold anklet is gone! That's right, bud. That's her name. <laughs> hey, you give her back that bracelet And have I thought up a stunt for you, Mr. Brown <clears throat> Mr. Rubin, will you take, uh, Mr. Rubin, come over here You take, uh, Mr. Brown out on Hollywood Boulevard Now here's a big, big basket of bricks Your stunt will be to break as many store windows as you can And get back here before the program is over Now, in the bottom of the basket, you'll find a bomb You throw that through the window of the Bank of America Are we three devils? <laughs> well, there goes Mr. Brown with Benny Rubin. Have fun, boys. Have fun. And now let's uh, let's get back to this young lady. Um, what do you do for a living? Well, I'm a dancing teacher. Oh, that's funny. My Aunt Alma's a dancing teacher. She teaches the rumba, but she's not working this week. Why not? She caught a cold on her hips and can't shake it off. <laughs> Costello, back home in New Orleans, all us girls listen to you. I'm a Southern Belle. You're a what? I'm a Southern Belle. Let you and me go out tonight and kick the gong around. <laughs> oh, that's a lovely dress you're wearing. Oh, it's not much. That's what I like about it. <laughs> Brings out your eyes. Mine, too. <laughs> Is that a southern dress? Sure enough. It certainly does. <laughs> How do you like Hollywood, miss? Oh, it must be just wonderful to live here in Hollywood among all the big movie stars. It sure is. I live right next door to Betty Grable. <gasps> that must be wonderful. Mm-hmm. Every morning, Betty Grable sings in her bathtub, and this morning I sneaked right over close to her house. Yes? Brother, can she sing? <laughs> <laughs> Enough of this nonsense, Costello. Now, miss... I am going to ask you a question. If you answer it, your stunt will be to kiss Costello. Now, how many... Kiss me, honey. I... Wait a minute, Costello. I didn't ask you the question I yet. know, but why wait till the last minute? Uh, wait a minute. <laughs> Here's your question. <laughs> the tomb of uh, the Egyptian king Tut was built 5,642 years ago. What was the name of the foreman of the bricklayers? <laughs> very, very simple. Think hard. Day or night shift? Uh, <laughs> a night shift. Uh, Patrick McGonagall? No, 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 wrong. He was on the day shift. <laughs> and you have to kiss Costello. All right. <laughs> and now for our next contestant. Wait a minute, Abbott. Let's <laughs> oh, look, Costello. Here comes Mr. Brown, the man who stunned... Who, the man who stunned was to throw the bricks to the winners on Hollywood Boulevard. Hey. And don't forget the bomb in the Bank of America. Ha <laughs> ha! Bet he had fun. Hey, look, he's got a cop with him. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> I caught this fella doing the funniest thing. <laughs> he, he was throwing bricks through all the windows on Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> 
He says he came from the show. <laughs> yes, officer. We did it for a stunt. He couldn't answer the question we gave him. It <laughs> serves him right. Uh -huh. <laughs> you should have seen him. <laughs> he didn't miss breaking one window in six blocks. <laughs> <laughs> I'd have loved to have seen it. It must have been a riot. <laughs> <laughs> it was a panic. <laughs> How do you think he broke the window in the maid company? <laughs> How do you think? How? Throwing lefty. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been a funny sight. <laughs> How did you happen to see him all? <laughs> I don't know. I guess I was just lucky. I, I was sitting in my sport car. <laughs> Yeah. He threw a brick through the windshield. <laughs> and he hit me in the head. <laughs> Boy, what a stunt that was. <laughs> who, who thinks up those stunts? Well, what? we both think up those stunts. No, no. I, you did it. <laughs> who did I it? thought of it. Was that you, Costello? <laughs> back for a curtain call in just a few seconds. The time it takes to tell you this. Here are Abbott and Costello with the final word. Folks, we want to remind you of the big contest on our Saturday morning Abbott and Costello Kids Show. You can win over $20,000 in prizes, including a $5,000 airplane, a $3,000 automobile, a live baby elephant, a $3,000 house trailer, and thousands of dollars more in big prizes. You can win them all by entering this contest, folks, and at the same time, you'll be doing your part to fight juvenile delinquency. It's really a worthwhile project, folks, so remember to tune in Saturday morning. That's over ABC Saturday morning, the Abbott and Costello Kids Show. You can hear it over most of, the, most of these same ABC stations. Uh, see you Saturday. See you next Wednesday night, too. Good night, folks. Good night, folks. Good night, everybody. in Patterson. at this time for another great Abbott and Costello show produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Charles Vanda and featuring Susan Miller and Matty Malnick's orchestra. This is Michael Roy saying goodbye until this same time next Wednesday. Be sure to stay tuned for the outstanding entertainment which follows throughout the evening on this ABC station.